We are live. Well, hello. I want to say thank you to everyone that's joining this live stream. And I want to take the time out to say, welcome, learn, vermico. How do you say it again? Vermicompost. Vermicompost, learn by doing. <laughs> yep. Meet Patrick. He is a great YouTuber, plenty of great videos. If you don't know who he is, please take the time out and check out his channel after this live stream. But Patrick, I'm going to leave the no, the floor is yours, and I want you to talk about what got you started raising worms. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, kind of started from me wanting to spend a little bit less money and put less fertilizer in the ground. So um, I was building garden beds, and I don't trust the kind of the builder sand that they have around my house and stuff. So building a raised bed, and I'm filling it with... Uh, you know, topsoil that I'm getting at the big, big box store. And when you start to do the math, it, it comes out to a lot of money. So I started to make my own soil. And um, I had been doing this uh, for a while because I was in the Air Force. And every time I went to a new base, I didn't really trust the soil beneath there. In fact, my, my, my boys would find little shell casings and stuff. So I've always never trusted the soil around the houses, right? So I'm building it. And then um, I knew that Compost was great. So I had a compost pile and then uh, I knew a little bit about vermicomposting and I said, you know what, I think we need to do this. And that's how I got started. I wanted to make compost for my garden beds. I wanted it to be quicker than waiting forever for the regular compost. And I wanted to stop using fertilizers, you know, because I was eating the food, <laughs> you know, that I'm growing in the garden. So for me, vermicomposting was kind of the way to go. So that's kind of how I got started you know, raising worms and, and doing vermicompost, probably similar to how a lot of people will get started, I would think. Okay, so you you started out with, was it 100 worms at a workshop? Was that oh, how yeah, you, okay. How you got started? <laughs> yeah, so um, I went on and I looked at prices on worms and, you know, people saying start with a thousand and all that kind of good stuff. And and uh, I knew that if I bought a thousand worms and I live in Florida, I didn't know much about the heat and stuff like that, that, you know, that's a, it was a fairly large investment for me with animals. And I didn't want to mm -hmm. like, like kill them because <laughs> I thought I was going to put it in my garage, which I don't recommend in Florida. Um, so, yeah, I was, you know, I live kind of on the edge of Tampa and there's a, a city next to us called Plant City. Uh, ironically, and I was driving by and I saw bait worms. So I stopped in and um, they had, you know, three or four dollars for like 30 bait worms. So I'm like, ah, let's just try small. And uh, I went past there three times. So I, I think I got 100 worms, maybe 90 worms. And I put them in a container and I was feeding them, loving them, checking on them all the time, making sure everything was wet and damp. And um, I about killed 90 worms <laughs> right there. Um so I rescued them and uh, took the 45 out that were left and kind of separated them from all the mess that I had made in that worm bin. And I put them in a little bucket that had a bunch of weeds and, and stuff like that. And I just forgot about them. This was probably around August or no, probably like September time frame. Mm -hmm. and I came back and checked that bucket in January and there were probably 300 worms in there. Uh, so I was like, wow, um, I just start a worm bin on accident. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I think I can try again. And kind of the rest is history. I got a Burmy hut and um, that came with everything I needed. And then I had those 300 worms and, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> so well, I started well. small. I do not recommend it. I would say go with a thousand, just bite the bucket, bite the bullet. You're, you're going to be all right if you go with a thousand. So, so now have you, once you started out with your your hundred your, your hundred worms and then the population grew, did you ever invest money into buying more worms in the future, or was that just how yes. your worm population? Okay. Yes. So that that bucket that had uh, about three hundred worms in it, I dumped it into um, two twenty gallon outdoor grow fabric pots, mm -hmm. and just kind of left them in there, and that kind of became my first. Uh, worm bin. I kept it outside. I figured, hey, the worms were living outside. They've got it figured out. It was, you know, winter time for us. So the temperatures were moderate. No, no issues with that. 
But when I bought the Vermi hut, I bought 2000 worms and mm -hmm. um, my neighbor, a couple doors back, he had gotten a Vermi hut. In fact, I did a video with him on how to uh, start a Vermi hut several mm -hmm. years later, but he raised them. He put them in his garage and they lived through the summer. So I kind of encouraged him, you know, and got him into worm farming and then he kind of did it and I saw he could do it. So then, so I went all in, I got the Vermi hut, I got 2000 worms. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, went from there and the learning curve was very, very quick with the Vermi mm -hmm. hut, you know, and then of course, looking at everybody, everybody's videos, found you, found mm -hmm. AV, found mm -hmm. obsessed and over there, you know, mm -hmm. and just taking up as much information as I mm -hmm. could and, and learning and stuff like that. And then, you know, doing research too. It's kind of mm -hmm. why I named the channel learn by doing, cause I was really literally learning as I was going. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a couple of places you can learn it. My thoughts are you, you jump on YouTube and you find folks like us that are doing it for our gardens mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Um, you learn a lot from them and then you learn a lot from the people that are actually growing and breeding the worms. I think Mimi's and, um, mm -hmm. uh, garden and worm lady, mm -hmm. you know, they're breeding them and you know, that yeah. kind of thing. And then also, from the um each each county in the united states anyway i think has a county extension office for ag agriculture that kind of thing and you can get access mm -hmm. to different studies and stuff like that so you kind of learn from the scientific community and each each one of those three types of worm farmers kind of brings something to the mix mm -hmm. and you know just kind of watching those videos and learning as i go making mistakes mm -hmm. aaron you can't do this you can't do that so i tried mm -hmm. this and i tried that <laughs> you mm -hmm. know in the worm bins and and just videoing it and, and going from there. So yeah, it's, it's been a very fun journey. That's for sure. I learned, I learned something every day. My last video, I messed up. I put in way too much food. Mm -hmm. I come back in and uh, as I'm digging around, the executive producer is just like backing up <laughs> from mm -hmm. the stench of pump, mm -hmm. pumpkin and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I'm learning, learning all the time. So what's the thing, what do you, what was placed in the bin that you are the vermin hat? that made it smell? What do you think it was? Or was it just anaerobic? So that actually happened in the urban worm bag. Um, okay. What happened was I, so Halloween happened and we got all these pumpkins. Mm. So last year I just put a whole pumpkin in our outdoor freezer. And uh, my wife, Autumn, who is the executive producer um, told me in no uncertain terms, is that going to happen again this Halloween? <laughs> so, um, I got all these one gallon, you know, Ziploc bags and I put the, I put as much pumpkin guts in there as I could. I chopped all the pumpkins up and I put those in the freezer. So when I came to feed the urban worm bag, you know, I've got my, you know, frozen ish. I try and thaw it out a little bit, but it's so full. I brought that out and it was, it alone was way too much, mm -hmm. but I had already started feeding and then. I had this big chunk and I just kind of put it on top and I should have just been like, okay, we're not going to do this. Let's, <laughs> let's just, I, I kind of knew better, but I thought, well, maybe this bin, bin can make it work. So I put it right on top. And what happened was I could see the worms getting to it. Cause I go in there and I lift the lid and, and check it and that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. it rained for three days in a row and the bin got a lot of moisture in it. Um, and I had poured some pumpkin juice in it. And I noticed because on the bottom, uh, I have a mortar tray underneath it. I, I leave the bottom that came with it off and it had a mortar tray and it had some liquid in it, but it didn't show up for eight days after I fed. So something oh. happened. And I think it was the humidity of the rain mm. um, and that, and then just the pumpkin kind of collapsed. So when I dug in there, the pumpkin looked like it had not been touched. So I mm. think it got matted down and went anaerobic. And the worms, you know, they just avoid it for a while mm -hmm. until the microbes have their way with it and the worms mm -hmm. come in and they eventually get to it. So I think mm -hmm. if I had waited two more weeks, I wouldn't have noticed um, anything. But because I went in there about 12 days, about my average for the urban worm bag, it 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 stunk. <laughs> it, wow. was, it was pretty bad. So, you know, I make mistakes for sure. It's always I fun did. to film them too. I definitely hear it. So what I'm hearing um, about worm farms in general, everyone has their own ways of doing it. It's, oh, there's yeah. no, there's no, there's only, there's not only one way to do a worm bin, correct? Oh yeah, absolutely. I have four different worm bins and even within those, I do things differently. Um, and 
I definitely do things differently depending on the seasons and we barely have seasons here. So I can't even mm -hmm. imagine what, you know, the folks further North, you know, for us mm -hmm. in the Northern hemisphere and further South and the Southern mm -hmm. hemisphere do. Um, but I mean, a perfect example is I have two outdoor worm bins. One is the one I talked about earlier with uh, two 20 gallon fabric pots. Mm -hmm. And then one is the urban worm bag. And with the urban worm bag, the temperatures, you know, get hot in there. And I, I put uh, frozen water bottles to try and keep the temperature cool. But my outdoor worm bin sits right on the ground and I never have to cool it down. The first year I, I did because I, I wasn't sure how the temperatures were, were yeah. but it doesn't heat up. But that urban worm bag, just because where I have to have it situated on the kind of the western side of my house, mm -hmm. um, it gets a little bit of sun even when I try and shade it. And it's black and it it the the fabric is so it kind of heats up. Yeah. And so that those two worm bins, you know, one is directly outside on the ground, mm -hmm. don't have to worry about heat. One is on my porch, um, still outside, but it heats up. Um okay. and then my my vermi hut and my um I call it my traveling worm bin down, my tiny traveling yeah. worm bin. It those two are very different because the the tiny worm bin has a very small volume and it will dry out quicker. And oh. the vermi hut is always perfectly moist. There, I, I've oh. never got the feeding tray of that thing wrong. It is just, it, whatever it kind of does with the humidity and everything with that lid, they've got kind of a unique lid, keeps, keeps the moisture perfect. So the tiny traveling worm bin, occasionally I'll go in and spray if it's been a while between feedings, but the Vermi hut, I don't ever have to spray. Now, if you look at my, some of my earlier videos, you might see me mm -hmm. spraying cause I don't know what I'm doing and I'm learning, yep. and, you know, yep. that kind of thing. And those mm -hmm. are, those early videos are, are tough for me to watch cause not a whole lot of editing and, you know. No, I definitely just, hear you. <laughs> just kind of threw uh, them out there. Yeah. Um, I was nervous to throw my first video up because I think I started in January filming and then um, it wasn't until July 1st of that year that I threw up my first video. And I had already done 34 videos and I oh. I had not put them up. I was just oh, too nervous. Wow. You put that first video up after that, you figure it out. Yeah. So what were you nervous <laughs> about? Just uh, uh, people saying bad things about you or oh, yeah. stupid for doing worms? Because <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All the things, um, you know. The first little circle of trust was just my wife and three kids, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and then eventually told my family and then yeah. the greater, you know, yeah. all that kind of good stuff. I was in the Air Force for 20 years, so I was just mm -hmm. waiting for one of my buddies to get wind of, you know, mm -hmm. what Patrick's doing now. He's, yeah. he's farming worms. He's lost it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so how do you feel now since you uploaded your first video? Oh, yeah, I, I love it. Um <laughs> You know, my my kids, they, you know, they grew up different generation than me and they talk about their YouTubers. And I'm like, what, you know, what's a YouTuber? Yeah. Um, we were at a uh, Universal Studios in Orlando and my kid comes off one of these rides that they had just kind of revamped. And he like, he comes running out at the time. I think he was maybe 11 or 12. And he's like, my YouTubers, my YouTubers on the, on the, the um, roller coaster. And I'm like, hmm what are you talking about? So my, my sister was with me. She goes, let's go meet him. And uh, so she went over there and he watches, he watched, I knew he watched uh, this YouTuber that um, he goes on roller coasters and, and the first time a roller coaster is out, you can look at his video because the theme parks invite him in and stuff like that. And that guy was on the roller coaster with my son. That's and awesome. this is somebody that is not famous to you and me, yeah. but he's famous to my 12 year old kid. Yeah. I'm like, wow, that is interesting. So my kids were actually excited for me to put stuff out on YouTube. And yeah, that's awesome. See if anybody even wanted to watch any of my videos. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. So do people see you in a restaurant know who you are? <laughs> <laughs> Not in the slightest. I have yet to uh have anybody recognize me outside because I don't have my glove on, you know, it's usually like, yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and your um, bracelets. You don't have your yeah. Bracelets oh yeah. Yeah. The bracelets. Oh, you do have them on. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're on 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah. Yeah. I did see someone came in and said, thank you for the certain, your service. And yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah. the, uh, yeah, the, the, the timing of everything we had, 
you know, after uh, my son was a senior in high school when COVID was going on. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have a graduation, didn't have a prom, all that kind of good stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, that August, right before he left for college, we uh, went out to the beach and stayed for a few days. And um, my older son uh, was in college at the time, and he's a um, a marine bio. He was a marine biology major, and he had these these bracelets, and each one is like this is for a dolphin, a shark, a, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And while we were out at the beach, we saw these in one of the gift shops. So we each got one, and they were cool. And so they ended up reminding me of our time there when everything was mm -hmm. kind of like dire and whatever. And mm -hmm. then I was with my family, my kids were going to college. It was like our last time to be a family together. Um, and the bracelets reminded me of it. And then the kids kept giving me bracelets. I was oh. a biology major in college, so I love animals too. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, boom, my first video, I have them on, I don't realize it. And then mm -hmm. I can't take them off. It's my brand now, right? I can't. Well, yeah, that's awesome. That <laughs> but really it reminds awesome. me of my family and my kids. So that's mm -hmm. kind of the story behind them. That is a question I get a lot. Um, in the comment sections and stuff is about the bracelets. I'm glad you asked. So, mm -hmm. oh, his well, son is deployed. So yeah, you know, you definitely know how it is mm -hmm. um, when folks are deployed. I spent a lot of time away from my family. So, mm -hmm. you know, God bless your son, Walsh Homestead Adventures there um, for being out there. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I know we edit our videos. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Say so you have a nine minute video. Yeah. How long does it take you to count a thousand worms in general? Oh my gosh. Yeah. What a mistake <laughs> that was, huh? I'm starting to count worms. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the last the last one about did us in. I mean, I hear you. um, and poor Autumn, my wife, the executive producer, was right behind the whole time. And mm -hmm. she is literally counting. She didn't trust me. She oh, was counting as I'm counting. And I missed one. She yeah. told me. I mean, yeah, oh, she you. is amazing. She's buzzing around out there she may yeah. stop by and say hi um but uh, the thousand worms is at least an hour and a half sometimes two hours oh, uh, of actual counting wow. and then the editing trying to edit anything worth <laughs> it I'm like who's gonna want to watch counting worms <laughs> nobody until i start to hear what autumn was saying or doing and <laughs> the last one we didn't count yeah. but we excavated the outdoor worm bin Mm -hmm. And I'm down there like trying to take the, the layers off and, mm -hmm. you know, get to where I got a worm pile and everything. And then I just, I kind of, I can, you know, my head's down so I can kind of see her feet and stuff. And she's like turned around and I said, well, are you taking selfies? And I look up and she is like taking selfies of herself as we're counting worms. And yeah, mm -hmm. it was, yeah, it's, we basically go off the deep end every time we do any counting. So there's not gonna be a whole lot of those videos coming up. That's for sure. I, I'm glad you do it because I know. <laughs> well, I mean, and that's the thing. The tiny worm bin, um, I got it from a vermicomposting class. And, you know, the lady was giving us all these, you know, huge piles of worms. She got to mine and she's like, boop. She gave me like maybe 50 worms in that thing mm -hmm. when we built the tiny worm bin. So I mm -hmm. built that thing up. So I was like, you know, the first time there was maybe 50 in there. Um, I was like, yeah, let's just count them. Mm -hmm. uh, after five months and there was like 400 something. I'm like, ah, that wow. wasn't too bad. It took us about yeah. an hour. Um, but then, yeah, when they started, you know, each subsequent five months, more and more and more. But since I had counted it once, I felt like I had to keep counting. I had to keep counting. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So have you ever tried, um, you, you don't have them, but are you interested in getting African night quails or are you just done? Are you just red wigger strictly? I, I am. I have, I have really thought about that. You would think mm -hmm. here um, African night crawlers would work well. And I would say that would be true for probably 10 months out of the year. Mm -hmm. And the end of December through maybe the beginning of February, we mm -hmm. might have a freeze or something yeah. like that. And I'm on mm -hmm. a strict two bin indoor diet <laughs> for my, yeah. my wife. So they'd have to be outdoors. Yeah. So I am kind of afraid of if we get a freeze or something. I could have put them in the garage, but still, if it's yeah. freezing outside and maybe mm -hmm. 55 degrees, but I really should. I mean, it. it I, I probably should. If, if I ran into it, a situation where I could get them mm -hmm. um, fairly easily, then mm -hmm. I, pro I probably would start another worm bin. But mm -hmm. how many worm bins do you have? Uh, it's uh, had seven. Now I'm down to six because I... 
I'm closing some up and consolidating. Let's see, I have um two Europeans. Okay. One red wiggler blue mix. The, and I had the diversion inclusion, mm -hmm. the worm bucket, and then I had another um and I have the hundred percent pure red wiggler. So yeah. I have six worm bands now. And now and you do you do uh, great because you feed them all at the same time. Yeah. Um, and yep. I, I really, I, I should have been doing that. But since I feed them separately, mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. timing was off. When I had three worm mm -hmm. bins, it was perfect. Like every three days, I'd you know throw out a video and feed a worm mm -hmm. bin. And when yeah. I got four, that three day cycle. Now everybody's getting fed twelve days, and it's it's just it's it's threw me for a loop. So if I add one more worm bin, two, that might be that might be. I, I'd I'd have to figure out my whole schedule of mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah. like stuff. But does anybody do you want anybody that does a African night crawler mix with other um worms? No, the only person I could have no, I don't even think Anne from Plant Obsessed does. So yeah, I don't think anyone I know any of our YouTube friends do that. Yeah, it's usually like the Europeans, the red wiggler, and the blue worms that are mixed. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, yeah. So but yeah, it's it might show up. I'm I might get some African night crawler uh compost worms. Mm -hmm. in the future. Okay. So your wife's walking around doing her thing, okay? <laughs> and now, now, check this out. My wife doesn't like worms. And I can understand that. Some people don't like worms. Your wife was the same way, correct? She did not yes. like worms? Okay. Yes. What made her come over to the dark side? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come here real quick. Can you come here? No, she, not yet. Not yet. Um, <laughs> She uh she likes to boss me around. So <laughs> Yeah. Um so at first, in fact, you came out with a video one time and you said something about, you know, your wife was afraid that they were going to squirm out of the bin and come crawl up into her bed. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, that is exactly how Autumn was thinking when I got these worms. It took me 6 months before she even let me, you know, get those bait worms and stuff like that." Mm -hmm. uh, so my first videos, I was just out there with a camera on a tripod and like digging through and all that kind of good stuff and feeding them. And she'd come out and say, oh, you forgot this or you need to do that or, you mm -hmm. know, that kind of thing. Um, and then she got behind the cameras, making sure it was focused and still not touching them, still not, you know, all that kind of good stuff. So she's not necessarily directing the movies. Mm -hmm. Um but she's kind of the executive producer. She gets final say on what happens. Um, mm -hmm. She uh, kind of gives me ideas, that kind of thing. And now mm -hmm. she does like to get in there and, mm. and play with the worms. There's been a couple of videos where it's been her hands in the counting videos sometimes when I'm just like, oh my gosh, I need a break. Or, mm -hmm. or she gets excited and you know wants to get in there. So she's actually down there touching the worms and stuff. And when we, the outdoor worm bin, um, when we uh, sift it and stuff, she helps me pluck out the worm. So she went from no way you're not having a worm in that's disgusting mm -hmm. to um, kind of being the brains behind a lot of the videos mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, now playing with the worms. So <laughs> there's awesome. hope for anybody out there that wife says no or husband says no, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that is cool, man. Seriously. Yeah, my wife and my kids are definitely anti no, <laughs> get them out of the house, but I can't. And I well, they'll freeze to death. I lost two thousand one oh. because we're outside. It's like, yeah, oh. being outside. Yeah, I see Heather up there saying, "Love your channel." So mm -hmm. awesome. Oh, from Sandra. Yeah, so I see. Yeah, love your channel too, Sandra. Yeah, um, love Sandra's channel. Mm -hmm. um, I got two two boys that don't want anything to do with the worms, and then mm -hmm. my my older boy who's a marine biologist. He actually got he's got a vermi hunt now. So he and his wife are, you know, save their scraps and put them in. And mm -hmm. it's interesting for me, too, because my vermi hut's older now. And it's helping me remember, you know, when you start a vermi hut, how it works. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, you know, you got the one tray and there's worms in it. How when do you put the next trays on and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so, yeah, I got what is that? Three fifths of the family will <laughs> yep. and stuff. So. Exactly. So, um, yeah. think, about, think about your question about my worm bands, how I feed them all at the same time. Yeah. Well, I, I noticed when I do it that way, castings are kind of like all in the same cycle, you know, the yeah. harvest is the, the same cycle. But with, with my bands being on a shelf, they're on different tiers, 
Mm-hmm. The castings are different. Some are yeah. wet, some are perfect, some are like, ju- you know, almost there. And it's weird how the consistency is just different from each, each other's, from all the other denims. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It's like the same house, but just the, the temperature or probably mm-hmm. the humidity gradient mm-hmm. right there just affects it. Yeah, so every every worm bin is different. I mean, the same fundamentals for everything and don't overfeed mm-hmm. and, you mm-hmm. know. Don't mm-hmm. overlove them at first, but mm-hmm. I, I check on I check on them. I don't touch them, mm-hmm. but I check on them almost on the daily. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's awesome, man. Trying to think what else is going to ask. You get excited when you see worm balls. Oh, gosh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. I mean, it, I'm like a kid yeah. in a, a candy store. Just mm-hmm. Because you never know. You it When you get into that worm bin, you can't mm-hmm. see anything. There may be a few worms on there. But mm-hmm. you dig in your hand and you can almost like feel them and then you dump it over and bam, worm ball. It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. I will never, I will never not get excited about seeing a worm ball for sure. And then when you got the avocados and you dump those yeah. out and you know, they mm-hmm. generate a lot of good comments. I mean, there are characteristics of a worm. They will form a ball if um, you know, there's not enough moisture, or mm-hmm. I don't know necessarily know to keep warm, but possibly. Um but they also do that for food. And that's what you're seeing in all our worm bins is they're doing it because that's where the food is. They also like to, what I've noticed, and you probably have too, they like to bump into things. So you'll see mm-hmm. them around the edges. Mm-hmm. Um, anytime there's a little hidey ho, they like to go in there. I don't know if it's yeah. a safety mechanism or something. Yeah. So I occasionally get a comment about worm balls. Oh, your, your worms are, you know, in fear of something or the parameters aren't right. That's usually in a worm bin. It's because there's food there and they're enjoying mm-hmm. it. So. But yeah. Well, and I like when you do your uh, slow motion shots of your like uh, cherry pit or something. You always crush it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those are those are they last forever. Like a a, a peach seed. I mean, yeah. I've never had a peach seed like totally degrade that I know of. So one time I was just like you know we got to end this right now, <laughs> and I got the the uh, pliers out. And then when I was going back and editing, I'm like, wow, that was very anticlimactic. It happened so soon. So then I started do- playing with the slow-mo. Um, and then even the, uh, the slow-mo sound, um, I'm like, well, I got to keep that in there too. Cause again, I get excited when something happens and mm-hmm. you know stuff like that. So yeah, I, I, I try to bust up some of that old stuff and cherry pits and peach pits, peach pits in particular. Yeah. They need to be crushed. <laughs> awesome so what was your biggest failure with any of your worm bands oh probably that first one was on a psychological <laughs> scale my first worm bin that failed the first worm bin that i actually tried to you know not just burying food scraps or or throwing a couple of worms into a pot throughout my life you know whatever but the first time I tried to run a worm bin, it was an absolute failure. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I dumped those worms. I felt bad that some had died and, you know, it had foul odors. I dumped them mm-hmm. in that bucket and left them outdoors. And um, four months, I was like, I'm, I'm not I'm not made for this. I can't I can't do a worm bin. Um, so that was probably a minor failure really in the grand scheme of things, but it was major Mm -hmm. for me and it almost prevented me from trying to continue. Um, And all I did there was I just overloved them. I uh, put in too much food for 30, for 30 worms. I probably put in a a slice of banana peel, um, you know, a lettuce stock, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) something that I would maybe feed a thousand worms on their first meal. And, you know, I would dig, I was digging in there every day and I'm like, oh, they haven't eaten it. Oh, I think they ate it. I don't know. I can't tell. So I put more food in and, you know, just kind of the the very rookie mistakes um, Mm -hmm. early on. And then, so that was probably the biggest one for me. Like it, it almost stopped me. Um, Mm -hmm. But about a year later, I put a bunch of rice in, in the middle of the summer. Actually, I guess it was, yeah, it was a, a year from when I started, but six months really from when I had uh, started doing videos and stuff. And I put out the video and um, the garden worm lady commented me and she said, Hey, you need to check on your bin. You might have some, you know, heat issues. And I went in there mm-hmm. and it was hot to the touch. Mm-hmm. I had built a little compost pile with rice um, and food scraps into my outdoor worm bin. 
and um, she saved me. She <laughs> she saved me because it was about two and a half or three days since I had done that, and I was able to break it up and all that kind of stuff. The worms were all on the outside. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So that was a big, that was when the community, I mean, you get comments too, and like these people help you out and you, you know, it's just fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. So I wouldn't have, I would have, I would have probably, you know, had a reduction in population of the outdoor worm bin had she not mm -hmm. come in and saved me on that one. Um, I did have, now I'm thinking of all my failures. I did have one in the vermi hut. Um, I put several banana peels and I think a whole banana in the vermi hut and then mm -hmm. and this was the middle of summer and then my air conditioner broke so it was about 93 in the house and the worm bin itself got almost up to 100 and when i took off the lid the food in the middle was completely clear um and there was like a ring of worms and the worms were like all around that ring almost like rays of the sun so they mm -hmm. knew at the exact temperature they did not want to go into um, so I had to put like frozen water bottles and, and stuff in there Ooh. to pull it down. But those worms made a, a kind of a demarcation where it was too hot for them. Um, and with the vermi hot in the lid right there, if you overfeed, it's like the heat can't escape as well. Uh, so that was, that was a big one. Yeah. Rice and Hannah's worms mm -hmm. and garden. Um, so that was a big one for the vermi hut. And then, uh, you may have seen a video a few months ago where I put a whole pumpkin in the urban worm bag. Mm -hmm. And that was just disgusting. I knew it was going to be bad because we were doing um, time lapses. So every day we'd go out there, lift the lid and, and shoot a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I saw it just turning to mush and, and off gassing and smelling. Mm -hmm. um, so that was pretty bad. But that, that didn't matter that much because the urban worm bag is such a big uh, bin that the worms can flee. And I really didn't have to do too much with it. So... Those are kind of the big failures all related to overfeeding and heat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's, those are my failures. Yep. It happens. It happens to everyone, you know, and that's just part of life. But now we have so much knowledge where we, we know how to make our populations, you know, grow and succeed. Oh yeah, definitely. So, definitely. so question I know. Go ahead. ahead. No, I was okay. just going to say on, on some of my starter worm bin videos when I'm starting out the, the tiny traveling worm bin, every time I restart it, I really do try and emphasize just putting a little bit of food in for that first uh, feeding and then adjusting from there because, and, and I try to tell when, I, when I'm feeding my worm bins, like, hey, I've got this many worms in here. This is why I'm feeding this much because I do think that's the number one problem is overfeeding. They've really led to all the issues that I've had. So, mm -hmm. but anyway, yeah, go ahead. What were you going to? That's there. So a lot of people are doing videos. You know, we have a lot, a lot of newbies and stuff, and I was one in the past. Do you cringe when you hear people that do their videos and say you can't feed them onions, you can't feed them, <laughs> you know, orange pills? You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, all well, that's a myth. And we know from experience that you can feed them things in moderation. Yeah. No, I, actually, it's, you know, I, they're just repeating what mm -hmm. um, they hear, yeah. but I also think I, I think they're trying to protect people because if yeah. you do put a lot of onions in, mm -hmm. um, the worms don't care, but it is going to smell and you yeah. are going to think you did something wrong. Yeah, you know, that is you, definitely true. Yeah, if you put a lot of orange peels in, mm -hmm. then they're not going to get broken down and you're going to get, yeah. you know, I'm from Florida. I know what a bad orange mm -hmm. smells like. It's mm -hmm. not good. Um, and you might get flies and stuff like that. So I think they're trying to help mm -hmm. the, the originators are trying to help people okay. stay away from that stuff. But yep. I, I feel like you just give the whole truth, you know, and let them yeah. you know, figure it out. Just let them know moderation. Yeah. So I think I, I come from everything, yeah. like everybody's trying to help. So yeah, I agree I, with you. On that. You know, and I don't argue because mm -hmm. everybody's worm bins are different and their yeah. reality is different. And maybe they had a situation where they put onions in and yeah. it didn't work out probably because yeah. they put too much. So I, I, when I see other, you know, videos and stuff, I, I, I don't say, I don't try and get into arguments because that's, yeah. that's what's working for them. And that's what I want. I want whatever's working for the individuals, you know, and I, whatever I say is what I have experienced, yeah. um, you know, I I get advice. You. if I've experienced then I, you know, I go with it. And if I don't, if I don't know the answer, I don't say I do. I usually try yeah. and push them over to somebody else like Sandra or you or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah so, my worst survived the hurricane. That's true, Sandra. <laughs> so did the hurricane affect him with the change of the temperature, you know, with the barometric pressure? Oh, yeah. Big time. Okay. Big time. So um, I don't know what it is, and I'm probably going to jinx myself, but the Tampa mm -hmm. area has not had a direct hit in like 102 uh, mm -hmm. years. There's a very specific, you know, orientation. If it comes just north of us, the, everything will be swept on shore and that kind of thing. I'm not near the water. Wind is the only thing that would affect me. Most of the, the, the bad stuff is, is the water damage along the coast and stuff. Um, but that change in barometric pressure, no matter where the hurricane is, even if it's 100 miles away, it ramps up quickly. And I think that is what really affects them. It's probably the, the same kind of stuff you get in the Midwest mm -hmm. where you get those lines of thunderstorms that come mm -hmm. through and change the barometric pressure. Mm -hmm. But hurricanes in particular, the barometric pressure changes like crazy. So I had my outdoor worm bin and I brought it onto my uh, back porch lanai area and I put some uh, cardboard underneath because it does, it does drain. I don't, you know, I, I don't, it doesn't like actively pour out water, but it can drain. Mm -hmm. um, and as the hurricane was coming and kind of went past us, I looked underneath and they were all trying to get out through the bottom seams of the outdoor worm. And when I opened the flaps, um, you know, they were all kind of out on the edge fleeing um, what they probably thought was going to be a huge thunderstorm. I mean, they, I think the, the reason, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, the reason the worms, you kind of see them on the sidewalks and stuff is because they get waterlogged and they can't breathe. So they're trying to mm -hmm. get up where they can, you know, be in not totally submerged. So I think mm -hmm. those barometric pressure instinctively, they kind of uh, uh, try and make it to the surface or out of the deep areas so that they, when the rains come, they're not getting uh, drowned and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. which leads me to something else. My dad one time, put a worm in my fish tank, which is right there and off. Mm -hmm. uh, the light's not on, but um, that thing survived for uh, a week and a half in there until I took the worm out. The fish are way too small to eat it, but mm -hmm. because it has a bubbler and oxygen, mm -hmm. um, the worm actually survived. So even though I'm talking about worms not surviving submerged, mm -hmm. they can if it's very highly oxygenated water because they don't mm -hmm. have lungs, you know? Yeah. But anyway, yeah, you, have a nice, you have a nice size algae eater in there. I used to have a fish tank with an algae eater. Yeah, that guy. He was about that little when I got him. And they just, you know, oh, that's uh -huh. a 35 gallon. Um, and uh, yeah, he keeps getting bigger. Anybody want an algae eater? I got one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we got a couple saltwater tanks too. My, Like I said, my son was is a marine biologist and uh, as he was growing up got saltwater tanks so that's fun too because i use some of the stuff from the the tanks and throw them in the worm bins you know so mm -hmm. yeah fun. yeah you um you made worm tea you did a video where you made worm tea correct or you know you got worm tea on a on on a road trip yeah so okay. yeah so worm tea is like i always have worm tea brewing that's like you know Cause I'm always using that on my plants and even on my lawn and stuff like that. And, you know, been a lot of worm tea videos and mm -hmm. it's just not mine's setup's not pretty. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, I've got a mm -hmm. bubbler from one of my fish tanks mm -hmm. um, and the bucket I use, I don't always clean it out every time. So it just, for me, and it's in a, we don't have cats, but it's a kitty litter bucket, you know, mm -hmm. it just, yeah. it just didn't make for a good video. So I could never like, okay, now I'm going to do my, how I make worm tea. Um, so I never did that video. And then my, my son calls me one day from college and he said, Hey, um, there's these guys that just graduated. They won the, 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 it's called the joust, um, over at university of central Florida, where I went to college and they go to college. Um, and business leaders come in, it's a $15,000 prize. And these guys, oh. um, won that prize. And he said, he went over to their table and was talking to him and he goes, oh yeah, my dad's got a YouTube channel about worms. Um, uh, I'll give you his number if you want to check him out and yeah. you know talk to him or whatever. So they checked out my channel and they emailed me and said, hey, love your oh, channel. Man. You want to come and you know oh, check cool. out our our place? And it's it's in Orlando and I'm from Orlando. Okay. Both Autumn and I are from Orlando and mm -hmm. opportunity to go see our son. So, mm -hmm. you know, of course we went down there and these guys were they're 23 years old. I mean, they literally just graduated college. Wow. Since they were in high school, they had been working on this. And like mm. 
I mean, I, I don't know if you watched the video, but that mm -hmm. guy was, I mean, he was a fantastic speaker. It yeah. was so easy um, to interview him and super smart. And um, I was a biology major, so I was geeking out. In fact, when we got in there, we just started talking and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, ah, we got to get this on camera because, you know, I was going to forget half of, you know, what they said. Um, but they are doing it on a, a huge scale. Mm -hmm. They are, you know, getting the microbes and they are making them dormant and putting them in there. So you're not getting, you know, they're, they, they've got their worm tea and it is shelf stable, which mm -hmm. if you, you know, put my worm tea into a bottle and close the lid, mm -hmm. then the anaerobic bacteria would take yep. over. That thing would be like probably mm -hmm. burst its cap. In fact, mm -hmm. My, my neighbor, a couple doors over, he had saved some and uh, they went to open it and it just kind of like phew, exploded from all the gases and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So these these guys, I don't want to say they're kids because they're adults, you know, but they're as old as my kids who are also mm -hmm. adults. Um, I've got a fantastic company and I went to um, a nursery because they, they, you know, they wanted to, you know, let me try it and all that kind of good stuff. And I'm like, I, I don't have any sponsors or anything. So I, I just want to go buy it on my own. So I went to one of the local nurseries. And purchased it. And when I was at the counter, I said, oh, have anybody ever talked about this stuff? Do they, you know, mm -hmm. like it? They're like, oh, my gosh, we love it. Everybody here, you know, buys mm -hmm. it as soon as a new shipment comes in because we love it on our gardens. And, of course, they do because it's, I mean, worm casting tea is fantastic for the plants mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And it, it does help to eliminate very specific um, pests like, um, uh, I think, aphids and... Mm -hmm. Uh, some, I think, I think spider mites, I'm not sure, but it doesn't kill all. It's not a pesticide. It is not mm -hmm. a, you know, kill smash stink bugs or smash bugs or, um, some of the, the squash, squash bugs. Mm -hmm. um, which I kind of get in my garden. It's not going to kill those, but there are some very, you know, and Sandra could probably tell us why or how I think it has to do with the chitin. Um, but but yeah, so, and they, they've got a company, they made a company out of this. They are, they're also doing some other work. They got a grant from um, the National Science Foundation, and they're oh, working. Wow. They are working on. Um, they're not worms. They are more like mealy bugs or something you might. Feel oh yeah. The roly poly things. Uh, yeah, they've got they almost look like a centipede. They got a lot of legs. Okay. Uh, I should ask them exactly what it was, but they You're are fine. eating styrofoam. So. They are, you know, show they're trying to figure out which species and how what the parameters are so that they can eat styrofoam and help, you know, oh. with recycling and stuff like that. Wow. So a lot of a lot of different things there. So yeah, really, see. really smart guys. And I've seen one of the guys. I think he tests. He does a lot of tests on something. He was sitting yeah. on the at the computer desk. Yep. Yep. And that's Rig Riggle Brew, by the way. I should say the name of the company they have, Riggle Brew, W R I G G L E B R E W, Wiggle Brew. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. He is. So there's two of them, and they've known each other, I think, since middle school. And um, the, the one that did most of the speaking, they're co founders. He's the CEO. And he actually, I think, was a chemistry or biology major and then switched over to economics. And then the other guy, who's like the chief research, uh, officer, I think he was uh, either microbiology or biochemistry, oh. and he literally takes you know their worm tea and evaluates it, sees what kind of microbes are in there, mm. and he he selects and then brews those, and you know it's he's like a mad scientist. But oh, man. you know you think of a mad scientist as like you know an older guy with wild white crazy hair and everything <laughs> and i literally saw the infancy yeah me too i literally saw the infancy of a mad scientist a 23 year old like just super smart great great guy mm -hmm. um, loving what he's doing you know and the two mm -hmm. of them are a fantastic team there was an, another gentleman there um they've got a, a five or six of them um and all of them fantastic but the two that i had on the video were the founders mm -hmm. Um, and been, they literally been winning, um, science fairs yeah. and, and the, awesome. the other interesting part was the business side of it. It wasn't just the science side because they won their, their, um, competition. And there were other players in there that had already been sponsored by like Microsoft and Google and they beat them because they already had a product that they were selling and mm. they had a supply chain and all oh this my gosh. And they're in college, you know, they have worked yeah. it out, um, so I, I hope for the best for them and that they grow and all that. Yeah. Kind of stuff. So, 
I've been taking that wiggle brew in like spraying it in my bins as I Mm -hmm. feed them because if they've got great microbes Mm -hmm. in there that are good for the plants, then I want them in my worm bins and, Mm -hmm. you know, get those microbes going in my worm bins. So, yeah. So, yeah. So when you um, apply it to your plants, you just, you spray it with a spray bottle, correct? Yep. Yep. Um, How, when do you see results? How many days, like a week after, or how can, you know, yeah, it, it's hard to tell with my my worm casting tea because you know a lot of hopium there. <laughs> I hope this works. I hope it. You know, yeah. pour it on. You're like, yeah, I think I I, I see a difference immediately. Yeah. Um, but I have some bonsai that I uh, I left uh, when we when we go on vacation. I'll put like my bonsais out where the sprinkler sprinkler will get them in our you know garden area. Mm-hmm. Um, but I left them out too long and I adjusted my sprinklers back and they, um, basically died of neglect and not enough mm-hmm. water. And so I just kept trying to water them and water them and water them for three weeks. I was just putting water. I saw no buds, no anything. And then I put some of my, I started watering with worm casting tea. And within a week I found some buds started mm-hmm. to grow. Um, so for me, I saw something right away with worm casting tea. Now, were those buds growing for three weeks and then I just happened mm-hmm. to see them? I don't know. Yeah. I definitely see it in the um, the greening of my leaves and stuff like that. Um, now, you can't go cold turkey. You know, if you've been fertilizing your garden and then you just say, hey, I'm just going to use worm casting tea and that's it. Your garden is not going to uh, perform as well as you expect. It really takes... I think they say about four years to train your garden away from needing that kind of like crack cocaine, Mm -hmm. um, you know, fertilizer, all this nitrogen to the point where they are using the microbes as they're, you know, has been going on for years and years and years and the fungi and getting to all the, the, um, you know, elements that they need, the nutrients that they need um, and, and reforming all those, you know, webs, out into, you know, the soil and stuff like that. So I am probably four years into that. And I definitely mm-hmm. see my garden growing. You know, a lot of mm-hmm. people will say, again, it's one of the things you hear a lot of people say, oh, you can't just use fertilized with just worm casting tea. You need to use fertilized. Well, I'm telling you, after four years, I don't, I don't put anything but worm casting tea in, in, in uh, my worm castings. And I grow a, a great garden and all that kind of good stuff. And I know I need to show the garden, um, I know I need to show up more often, but um, I also like to grow weeds. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, I hate showing my garden with all the weeds. Everything grows mm-hmm. in Florida, you know, like yeah. constantly. So I'm just a little bit of a perfectionist and I want to make it look perfect and, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But I will give a garden tour eventually. My garden is also spread, you know, kind of, uh, I've got a garden bed, but then around our, you know, kind of pool and I, I grow stuff and, you know, all that kind of good stuff, kind of sneak it past the HOA. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yeah, I hear you. I definitely understand stuff. that. Yep. Got a question here. How do you sterilize your leaves for indoor worm bins to keep other bugs out? Um, for me, we don't have any deciduous trees around us, so I don't use leaves. I have pine needles um, that I have been starting to put in the outdoor worm bin. Um and I have palm trees, which really just, they're too stringy. Um, so mm. AJ, you could probably answer that one better about putting leaves in. I don't put bring leaves in either. Some people say they put them in the oven, but I'm like, uh-uh, I can't do that. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe Sandra, Sandra knows it better than me because she uses leaves and she could, she could probably answer that question. So Sandra, could you? Answer that question about leaves and how to sterilize them for worm bins, please. Yeah, I um, mm-hmm. I use shredded cardboard just because I have so much, and I've mm-hmm. got this, you know, four year old shredder that just uh, that was a leap of faith. Put my first uh, piece of corrugated cardboard through the shredder, mm-hmm. um, but uh, that's that's mainly what I use is cardboard mm-hmm. uh, for bedding. Now on our walk, I think in the outdoor worm bin, I just put in. Um, big kind of mapley looking leaves because um, someone from the north planted a, a tree down here that's a deciduous tree and it, its leaves fell and all that kind of good stuff. Now we do have oaks, but oaks the uh, the oak leaves 
you actually have to rake them out of your lawn because they can get very acidic. So I've never, mm. you know, put those in. Um, mm. I, I did have a magnolia tree that we had to um, get rid of, but I put those in there. And I, with those, I think I put them in the microwave for like 20 seconds. Um, but again, I'm a lazy worm farmer. I don't want to do too much extra work. And I, and I know the executive producer doesn't want me, you know, nuking leaves in her microwave or my microwave. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> Keep my worm stuff away from my food stuff as exactly. much as possible. Exactly. Oh, someone just commented about that. See, she oh. puts hers in the oven. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah, yes. no, I mean, an oven, you, you, it's, yeah, it's killing everything. So, yeah, exactly. you know, enough, so, you know, no microbes are going to, you're not going to get yourself sick. So, you know, it keeps going. Here we go. Some more stuff. Yeah. Um, I haven't got, I haven't got anything like bad critters in my worm bins. Um, I did in my vermi hut at one point I had, uh, springtails, mm -hmm. but then I've never seen them again. I do get mm -hmm. mites, the tiny mm -hmm. worm bin, the tiny traveling worm bin will get mm -hmm. mites. Um, occasionally, and I'm not, you know, how do you get that first mite? I know you say you, you, you don't see that kind of stuff in there. Mm -mm. Um, but you know, I don't know how probably from the worms themselves. I mm -hmm. mean, some people say, oh, mine are totally mite free and all that kind of good stuff. You mm -hmm. get one mite riding mm -hmm. on the back of one worm and yeah. you could get, um, and they're not bad. They, like you say, and, and the plant obsessed will tell you, they, they shred, mm -hmm. um, stuff mm -hmm. and they're, they're definitely, worm bin helpers but when i get a bloom i don't see that much and then all of a sudden i get a lot then that's kind of an indicator for me that mm -hmm. um, things are probably overfed a little too much but mm -hmm. i haven't gotten any slugs i haven't got some of that other stuff and it's probably because mm -hmm. i don't i don't i'm not taking stuff from outside into um mm -hmm. in my worm bins but mm -hmm. yeah is kermit the frog still around uh yeah i just <laughs> Kermit the Frog and, you know, the close, well, I guess they're not close cousins. One's an amphibian, but uh, I get lizards. I get lizards oh. hiding out in the uh, flaps of my outdoor worm bin. Uh -oh. um, but we have we have kind of like a, a dry, it's not a lake, but it's it's kind of an overflow for um, the gutters and stuff. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of rain. And I only find babies. I never find big frogs because they're oh. just hiding out. They're not trying to get my worms. Okay. Um, you know, the lizards aren't either. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just hiding out in that outdoor worm bin because there's just a lot of predators around, you mm -hmm. know, the whole ecosystem yeah. going. I just had mm -hmm. ants. My next video, but probably not oh, my next no. one, but one after that, um, I talk about the ants that I get in that outdoor worm bin sometimes. Okay. And uh, they are not predatory ants. They are foraging ants. So they'll hide in the, the flaps of that outdoor worm bin and they put their little eggs in there and stuff like that. But if I go in and like, move the flaps of the worm bin every couple days or every three days, then I don't, yeah. see, I never see any ants, but it's when I'm gone for a week or, you oh, know, when the okay. temperature changes too, then all of a sudden yeah. they think that's where they can make their nest and stuff like that. Yeah. So hmm. the outdoor worm bin is probably where I deal with the most kind of uh, critters and stuff like that, but nothing, mm -hmm. nothing, you know, brought in from leaves or, you mm -hmm. know, anything like that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what are words of encouragement for someone that would like to start a wine bin? What, why would you encourage you to start a wine bin? I would say just start it. If you're thinking about it, if you've gotten to the point where you're kind of doing the research and looking on YouTube, you just need to get started. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the hardest thing is, is uh, you know, starting the worm bin. Because um, once you do that and you get them through that first month, which is not mm -hmm. hard, just just don't love them. Too much. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. It I it, it will become a lifelong obsession. Really, I don't mm -hmm. know anybody that has that's been doing it for you know over a year and only has one worm bin. <laughs> it's yeah, usually, you get another worm bin. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's that's that's the biggest word of encouragement I could say is to just start, and it doesn't matter where you live how big or small your your house is or your apartment or you're in a college dorm or you're in an rv or any of that kind of stuff i've proved it with the traveling worm bin mm -hmm. um you can take those things anywhere and and for me it helps you 
understand how much stuff you actually throw away, how much food scraps you throw yeah. away, how much cardboard you throw away. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it's kind of changed. It's changed how I think about everything. So get, just do it. Just secure your container and then order mm -hmm. your worms mm -hmm. and then just make it happen. And keep watching those videos because they will, yeah. you know, you watch one video and it might teach you one thing, but yeah. we can't, you and I can't teach everything all in one yeah. video. So you just got to mm -hmm. keep watching them and, and see how it goes. So yeah, there's my kids coming back from oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I won't hold you too long. I know yeah. you want to spend time with your family and stuff. But, yeah. um, I definitely <laughs> want to say thanks. You know, thank you so much for joining the stream, Patrick. And um, absolutely. You have a great channel. I watch your videos and I like to see what's going on. Uh, I always laugh every time you count those worms because I can feel your pain, brother. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to say thank you because um, I learned a lot from you and I've been watching your videos since before, you know, I was worm farming yeah. and, you know, taught me a lot about YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just watching your, you know, just how you do stuff and your, I've mm -hmm. never, ever met someone so positive and, and so oh, like absolutely likable. Um, and uh yeah autumn and i just we love your videos yeah. and um you know well hello <laughs> you know <and laughs> we love it we love it yeah so yeah it's you're fantastic <laughs> definitely Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah do, you, do you have any other nuggets thank you for the kind words do you have any other nuggets you'd like to leave before we end the stream no i just i appreciate everybody that has watched even part of one of my videos and you know anybody that's left a comment uh, i appreciate all of them you know i took me a while to leave a comment on mm -hmm. one of my first videos uh to that i watched of somebody else i just thought yeah. you know they don't care but they mm -hmm. do the people that put yeah. out these videos we work hard and mm -hmm. uh to put them out there and we're trying to do the best we can so a little comment um even if it's just a thumbs up like you know that we really appreciate that i know you do aj mm -hmm. um yeah. so i just want to say thank you and if anybody's thinking about starting a worm bin just get started you're gonna love it for sure mm -hmm. and on that note how do you end your videos <laughs> sometimes i have to i have to ask autumn um so i hope you're all having a great day yeah. I hope your worm bins are doing well. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining the stream. Patrick, once again, thank you for your time, brother. Absolutely. Yeah. Have a good Take night. Care. Yeah. I'll see you. Bye. -bye.